understand all. The initial test, we understand the pure and radiant virtues of our intrinsic nature. So this flow follows on from the past two, three teachings that the underlying goodness of our intrinsic nature. And I've explained to you about the uh, how Sang Chuang went over and do, came, come back and validated uh, this teaching. This virtuous nature is found inside and out. Uh, I will explain a bit more about this inside and out later. And you may uh, remember that one of the um, contemplation I gave you, there was some time ago, maybe a couple of months ago, I was talking, I gave you the sharing about practicing inside out and outside in, and this is what it is. So insight is the wondrous wisdom that we possess. And this is where we need to practice with awareness uh, because this is what you, uh, the wondrous wisdom. Why is it wondrous wisdom? That's because of the, um, and that you're able to practice uh, the unconditioned Dharma. Outside is all the Dharma we understand and express. And this is about our, so when you say, and understand, right, there's the Dharma, and express is our demeanor. The demeanor is our conduct, is our character. So this is what we need to be mindful of. So awareness and mindfulness. So in Master's explanation, our intrinsic nature has already been buried under a deep layer of vision. So we have our intrinsic nature. The problem is over innumerable lifetimes, um, we have buried our, our intrinsic nature, our pure Buddha nature. So, but then the Buddha has already spent innumerable cow, cow parts in the present and countless Buddhas engaging in a spiritual practice. So if we have, if we have um, spent innumerable lifetimes uh, since the beginningless of time that we have buried our, our the deep layer of affliction, so you can imagine that how many lifetimes we need uh, to excavate that. So the virtuous nature is found inside and out. Uh, which I explained uh, um, earlier. So inside this wondrous wisdom, which is what this interesting nature is, that's where this wisdom, wondrous wisdom of the uh, unconditioned Dharma. So as a result of which, when based on whatever we understand our habitual tendencies is, so we speak the way we do, and we have the deeds um, according to what we desire. And this is the problem that if you are a selfish being, we can be selfish in the words that we do and the deeds that we, we do. So it changed right, to being selfless and the speech will change. And so the, our deeds and our thoughts. So we must be constrained to others and help them reduce the burdens and the work. And this is what has in the process of cultivating. Um, we need to actually exercise that and be in practice based on those virtues and the teachings that Master has taught us. So Master gave an example of the Philippines and how they express the love and they describe the underlying intrinsic nature of their actions. But people without the system cannot achieve this uh, because they are still grasping on uh, to the way they think. So if they have this a lot of greed, a lot of hatred, a lot of anger, and this is what they keep grasping on and it's very difficult then to practice. So unless we let go of um, our, our thoughts, words and deeds uh, will be as such. So inside and outside. So with the virtue, we cultivate the external uh, actions. And this is where we need to understand and express the Dharma inside and out. So inside and out is about the uh, what we understand and we then express it out in a way our conduct would do so. So if you remember some time back when Master gave the uh, teachings in the life of chapter, I can't remember chapter 21 or 22, um, she went on to thought about external cultivation and the internal cultivation. So in the external cultivation, uh, we do so uh, with the, um, the, the uh, four infinite minds. And in the internal cultivation, we do so uh, with the most four bodhisattva vows. So this is how we express and uh, ourselves from um, inside out. So our love and virtuous nature are from inside and out. Um, so inside we inherently have this pure and defiled great love. And that is the inherent goodness in all of us, but it's buried with affliction. So we need to excavate um, all this um, mud of um, on dust that we have uh, piled over innumerable lifetimes. So then Buddha then explained that any sentient being with a mind has the same interesting nature as the Buddha. 
So it's then as an is there any sentient being without a mind? So as long as we mind, we are the pure Buddha nature. So then the Buddha said, it did nothing more than teach what sentient beings already intrinsically possess. That means the Buddha nature is already all of us. So all we do is, is excavating that. So if you remember when I went very, very early um, sharing that I, I, that I shared with you all, uh, the cultivation in the Buddhist path is about losing. It's not about gaining. It's about losing things that you have because you already have your Buddha nature, right? So all you, and it's mean pile up. So it's not about piling a Buddha nature on top of your affliction. So the whole cultivation practicing is about losing, it's losing all those afflictions uh, that you have. Then only then um, you can reveal your Buddha nature. So then uh, when we do so, um, the, the uh, Buddha nature uh, will reveal uh, itself because we already have it. So in this travel as a massive explanation, the Buddha's great enlightened wisdom is clearly something sentient beings have. That means we already have it. So the, the Dhamma nature is like a great ocean, but unfortunately being shrouded by a lot of affliction. It does not say it is true or not. And enlightened beings and noble beings are equal. I'll come to that uh, later here. So we have this Buddha nature, but we have become deluded. So, so therefore, uh, we need then to understand that, and in our practice, we need to um, get rid of all the affliction. It's not, again, it's not about accumulating uh, anything else. The Dharma nature is like the ocean, and, and thus our wisdom, our enlightened nature is vast as the ocean. So we need to have an open heart and an open mind uh, to be in the practice of, uh, of the Dharma. So the Buddha said, the Buddha does not say it is true or not. Are all things actually real? The Buddha said, everything is empty in nature. In the end, it returns to nothing. So this is, so if you understand this couple of lines, then you know that my master has been teaching about emptiness, uh, about letting go, so on and so forth, is to uncover the Buddha nature. So. This whole journey is about one of discovery, discovering who you actually are, uncovery to uncover all the afflictions so that you can unveil the Buddha na uh, nature to rediscover your good intrinsic nature. So, um, and this is what uh, we are doing in this particular practice. So as for enlightened beings and no beings, you are an enlightened being and you want to be a noble being. And so this is what this um, sentence means. Enlightened beings and noble beings are equal. So the only difference between the two um, are our defilements. And there's only difference between um, and a noble being and ourself. And so if, therefore, if we understand that, all we need to do is shave off uh, all these layers and layers of affliction and which is in the path of losing. So in the lessons learned, those without affinities are those lacking the right causes and conditions. So sometimes when, when for uh, whether a good karmic seed or a bad karmic seed to arise, there is a right cause. And then you must have the condition for the seed to germinate. So same thing with affinity. So we need to have the right condition to do so. But the Buddha compassionately thought all and ultimately form affinities without bias. So therefore, it doesn't matter who you are. So therefore, the only difference are only um, the laser affliction that we all have piled up. Whether they have affinities or not, as long as they listen to the Buddha Dharma, they were able to plant causes. So sometimes the causes that we plant may not manifest in this lifetime, but it will do so in a future lifetime, which is also the reason why that we are in practice, even though we may, you may be practicing very well, is to plant that into the mind continuum so that the progress will continue in future lifetimes. So this is unconditioned loving kindness of the Buddha and such is the true suchness uh, in all of us. So all sinner beings in the world intrinsically have the Buddha nature. Uh, as long as we learn virtuous teachings, we can apply them and this is a journey we are taking on uh, right now. So in our contemplation uh, for today uh, relating to this, so a householder in practice has a spiritual consciousness, consciousness or practice inside out and outside in. So inside out is the practice of applying the Dharma within you and understanding 
what is the unconditioned dharma, empty, emptiness of it, and you practice uh, to express yourself out. So outside in is when you observe outside, but you do not get defiled by what is outside. So when we step forward, when you look at what is outside in, that we need to then discern what is unwholesome, do not take then. Whatever is wholesome is for us to express our demeanor, our conduct to do so. So this is a part of inside out. It's about awareness and outside in is about mindfulness. So therefore, when we do that, we then understand and apply the Dharma into our daily life in both the internal cultivation and the external cultivation. A householder who is well in practice is like a nimble to be able to rise above the worldly winds. Why is it rise above the worldly winds? Because we as a householder, we are still living in the world. We still have a worldly life, unlike monastics. When you live the worldly life, you have to face the worldly winds and they will keep blowing uh, at us all the time. Uh, praises and blame, name and shame, gains and losses, happiness and sadness, they will come to us every moment of the time throughout the whole day. So you got to then rise above those worldly winds. Otherwise, uh, you'll be within the forces of the wind and you can get blown away. So in the matters that see, you observe and rise above. And that is what it is when you count it inside, outside in. So you were to see, you observe, and you rise above that. And you do not influence by whatever is unwholesome. Then you apply the four right efforts a few days ago, the master shared, right? The four right efforts. How to deal with the two matters of doing with unwholesome thoughts, two matters doing with wholesome thoughts. With the elevated consciousness, you are then prepared for the unprepared. And that's what we need to do, to rise above so that we prepare for the unprepared. So learn to unlearn the worldly ways. And such is the swift practice that rises above the winds. So on relationship, do not trouble trouble, not even when trouble troubles you. And either mind looks for trouble such as living with the worldly concerns as a householder for us. So you live in the world, but do not let the world live in you outside in. Live inside out then in your practice. So find the peace within and not from the world. So do not search outside. Peace is found within you. So train the mind to be still and you will then find the inner peace. Okay, God and brothers and sisters, that's all I have. Thank you so much. Hello. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Chin, for this awesome, awesome. Now I'm getting a little bit more troubled, really. Yeah, with all the trouble, trouble, so many troubles. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, can we take a group, quick group photos of all of us? Uh, at the same time, then we get uh, maybe Sister Stephanie to say a few words as well. Yeah, Sister Stephanie, no need to say la. Sister Xiao Ching, faster la. Seven o'clock, come already. Okay, Sister Xiao Ching, yes, Sister yes, Xiao Ching. <laughs> yeah, come, come. Oh, come pass, pass out. Yeah, trouble, trouble. All the Buddhas, uh, yeah. Please on your video. Please on your, your video. Show us, yeah. I'll just change this. <laughs> the trouble, trouble. I also need, I took, took the photo already. I don't mind for trouble. Then the wisdom, the wisdom. Let us all rediscover our pure nature. Okay? And all the brothers and sisters are uh, on board. Very wonderful sharing today. While listening today, I was and uh, try a lot of reflection. Uh, my, my page is full already with words, uh, but indeed, uh, we, yeah, these are uh, very powerful. Each of us has intrinsic Buddha nature, neither less or more than Buddha. First I heard it, I was like, is it true? I cannot ever believe it. But as we walk on this journey, it's indeed true. And yeah, as we go through, I think uh, meeting people, especially those we hear the story, Sister Peggy, Sister Suisana in charity life, it's uh, from time to time, we also face that. Uh, but how do we face that? I mean, these people are people with affinity to us. We un because we understand Suji is a spiritual cultivation ground. So I re recall in refugee, we see we also have this family during the first assessment, their conditions has improved since they asked, when they asked for UN to help, their conditions was very bad. There was this single mother with uh, like six children, all of them not working, but by the time we visit, them, uh, for the assessment, one well, of the child has, uh, has started working. Of course, uh, there are two options. One is just say, okay, then we can move on and uh, do reports uh, known for this family. But thinking masters are uh, teaching each of us like this, uh, like masters, 
I must say one hand while caring for uh, ourselves and one hand on master's behalf, what would master say to them? So we explain the conditions of other refugees. Instead of us saying no in our report, we let them think and they complain, contemplated. So they may have the to be benefactors of others, then they heard the conditions of others is so poor. And then they say, okay, we give up our rights. Uh, this money, let us uh, donate. It's like a donation to others. We pass it to others. We can't, we really have the opportunity. So with master's teaching, not only we can benefit uh, ourselves, we can also help the others uh, to benefit others. Uh. As for the uh, Master said today, actually, in fact, uh, Dharma is a great ocean. Just, it sounded very simple, just turn the hand, like, we can, by eliminating afflictions in mind, we can realize re a realization, we can make realization so easily, it's like turning our hand. You can't, is it that easy? Uh? But in Sisi, we can see maybe people like drug addicts, even when I first joined Sisi, uh, there was this story about this sister, her husband uh, has mistress, you know what? She not only take care of the husband and the mistress, mistress when they are ill, she also deserve, she served them like Buddha because she has master's teaching. She's like, this is the, I, when I heard this, the turning of the head, but maybe it's not easy for her the journey, but it's doable. Let us not hold on to this uh, suffering. Master actually loves to us. Uh, these uh, desires are all the poisons. Uh. It's like if we are still clinging on to it, it's like we are the vouchers uh, fighting over rotten flesh, dogs trying to bite flames. Uh pressing fire against scabies, uh, holding torch in a headwind, black cloth co covering us, a uh, master during the system and dawn. So the, may each of us in this flaw, flawless seat have overflowing master's uh, teaching. Uh, rather, uh, she said, rise above the worldly winds and uh, have this elevated consciousness. We all can do that. That is the truth for, for each of us as we uh, practice uh, daily. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, Sushi.